Traditional herbal medicine is highly sophisticated. It's the product of centuries of discovery and learning. But on the rare occasions when things go wrong, usually in the hands of people who are inadequately qualified in herbal medicine, knee-jerk responses generate an ever-tightening noose on these age-old healthcare systems. On the 1st of April 2011, hundreds of plant-based products which have been safely sold in Europe for decades will be banned unless action is taken. It's like they ban the herb and then I believe so, so many people, yeah, they will going to suffer. Some patients just in the early yeah, age of 30 and they have been told, oh, you cannot have child, yeah, because you are premenopause, the follicle stimulation too high and nothing they can do about that. The Chinese medicine, we are so, so good to treat that. The Traditional Herbal Medicinal Products Directive was passed by the EU in 2004. It was set up to manage and license traditional herbal products, yet so far not a single classical herb used in Ayurvedic or Chinese medicine has been granted a license. And soon Ayurvedic practitioners like Sandeep Garj will be unable to prescribe many of their treatments. That will push many products into the black market where there's no control at all. Regulations that are steeped in pharmaceutical standards designed primarily for synthetic drugs and for some of the largest corporations on the planet simply cannot be applied to herbal traditions of more than 4,000 years. You have a million people at least on a daily basis taking these. You cannot ignore that fact and say that they have to be subjected to clinical trials or they have to undergo you know, accelerated stability studies and all these kind of things that are meant for very, very different chemical formulations where you are isolating a particular extract and then you don't know really whether it's stable or unstable. But you've got a whole plant where you know that plant exists in nature in that way and is able to live its complete life. That means it is quite stable. Western Orthodox medicine simply cannot prevent the huge rise in chronic diseases which are crippling our healthcare system. Heart disease, cancer, diabetes, obesity and osteoporosis. The EU is denying its citizens a tradition which could actually help them with their health. To us, Western medicine really is the alternative medicine. Yeah? We have been learning Western medicine in order to supplement um, our knowledge in coping with health and disease in China. And um, we have for the past 100 years or so incorporating Western medicine into China and reviving and modernizing Chinese medicine. So uh, it's about time the West recognize that the benefit of Chinese medicine and, and, and use it for the benefit of the people. Herbal medicine tradition. Hello everyone, welcome to Global Government News. Today is Monday. December 13th, 2010, and I am Darko. Uh, welcome to this War on Terror, Liberty, Sovereignty news segment. I'd ask uh, l new listeners and viewers to please visit my website, www.ggnonline.com. That is ggnonline.com. All right, we're going to start off with this uh, first article here. It's actually from the 8th, and I did cover it, just the headline. I barely even got to read the headline in my last video, so... Um, Right up here, I'll just be able to have a little more time to read it. WikiLeaks cables consult us before using intelligence to commit war crimes, U.S. tells Uganda. U.S. sought assurances that intelligence was being used in compliance with the law of armed conflict during long-running Ugandan battle against Joseph Kony's rebel movement. It goes on here that the U.S. told Uganda to let it know when the army was going to commit war crimes using American intelligence but did not try to dissuade it from doing so, the U.S. Embassy cables suggest. We're going to move on here. It says here, Swedes shocked by first terror attack in three decades. Two people were wounded in central Stockholm after a car bombing. And, you know, I kind of like to wait a couple days until after these uh, little events take place. And why is that? Because I'm taking other articles that come out after the event and collect them. And then you can get a bigger picture because if you just look at this article right away, oh my God, terrorists are going to get us. And then, um, and then you just follow throughout, you know, day to day afterwards, uh, the articles, you start to get, you know, the bigger picture, which is this looks more like a false flag terrorist attack and that really terrorism, real terrorism, uh, I don't even know if it exists. I guess it does to some extent, but uh, even then it's, it's basically 
led by intelligence agencies. So the, I guess you could say the real terrorists are led by intelligence agencies, and then those that we consider terrorists um, or are militants or insurgents are um, those that will be like patriots that are fighting against the government to um, basically claim their sovereignty and to get foreign banks and the Federal Reserve System out of our country and uh, basically to get their government back, to get their, their freedom back, right? So in this, in, in this huge hodgepodge of, uh, of just propaganda, lies, and coercion, and disinformation, and really just confusing the hell out of the average person who doesn't really know what is going on because it's their head spinning from all the lies and, and stuff like that. So you can basically know that, um, yes, I guess terrorism really does exist, real terrorism, but then um, it's, it's, it's trumped by government-sponsored terrorism. Uh, so much that uh, I, I w really wouldn't worry about, quote, real terrorism. I'd worry more about government-sponsored terrorism by intelligence agencies. This says UK links to Swedish bomb probed. British authorities are investigating UK connections of the man believed to be behind a terror attack in Stockholm over the weekend and search a house where they believe he had lived. And, uh, you know, there was an article or actually this article I just uh, mentioned, Swedes shocked by first terror attack in three decades, and then you find out, oh, he had UK links. And then you go here, Swedish police, the bomber is likely to have aid. Oh, he had aid. And then you go on to this one, Swedish bomber planned Christmas carnage. Ooh, kind of like the, uh, the Christmas tree bomber who was also uh, basically uh, funded and raised by the uh, FBI and the government, and then kind of like the Christmas Day bomber, right? And uh, and then you move to this, and it says military staffer knew about attacks, says a report. And then you go to this, the Stockholm bomber, family blames Britain for radicalization. So you see what I'm getting at here, guys? All these links will be posted, and you can go and check them out. Uh, but basically, yeah, here it says here, the man who Saturday killed himself in what is labeled as a terrorist attack in central Stockholm was probably not acting alone, says Swedish police, who also confirms his identity with 98% certainty. And that's just like the Christmas Day bomber. No, he wasn't acting alone. He was actually escorted by some sharp-dressed man that nobody knows who the hell he really was, uh, but that he was possibly working for an intelligence agency. Um, and it says here, uh, so, you know, I'll just skip that because it's prop straight up propaganda. A Swedish armed forces employee warned an acquaintance to stay clear of an area in central Stockholm on Saturday where several hours later the two explosions went off in what is being called a terrorist attack. So he says if you can avoid it, uh, uh, Drotten gotten today, a lot can happen there, just so you know, the message said according to the TT News Agency. Armed Forces spokesman jo uh, Jonas uh, Svensson told TT on Sunday he was unaware of the message. I haven't heard about this at all. Now I'm going to go check out the information. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I'm sure, right? So finishing up here, yeah, it said uh, the family of the Stockholm suicide bomber last night blamed Britain for his transformation from an ordinary teenager to an El Ciaeda fanatic. And it says here, uh, uh, this individual showed little interest in religion as he was growing up in Sweden, channeling his energies into sports and partying. But after he began attending uh, Bedfordshire University, where most likely he met some kind of intelligence agency, agency, probably a student or something like that as a reservist, everything has changed as he has become a strict Muslim with increasingly extremist views, even naming his baby son Osama in honor of the al Qaeda mastermind Osama bin Laden, right? So, and he was a CIA operative. We all know that, right? So this next one up is Moscow police mourners clash, three reported injured. So in this uh, article it says hundreds protest against Russian government. Opposition activists call for the resignation of Prime Minister Vladimir Putin. It says hundreds of uh, people protested against the Russian government Sunday at two separate rallies in Moscow with opposition activists calling for the resignation of Prime Minister Vladimir Putin and nationalists demanding greater rights for ethnic Russians. says several opposition activists were detained said a third rally with uh, nationalist overtones drew more than 1,000 students in the southern city of Rostov-on-Don, or uh, rostov -on, not sure how you pronounce that, raising fears that long-standing ethnic tensions were reaching a boiling point. So um, 
and there's a picture of it, and we're going to move on here. Kremlin vows to punish violent racists after a clash. So before they were nationalist, now they're racist. I like how that works. Police will track down and punish the hooligans and racists who rampage in Moscow this weekend. President Dmitry Medvedev declared warning that Russia itself could be torn apart if, seen, if seething ethnic tensions spin out of control. So it said here about 5,000 people, mainly boys and young men, rallied for hours on, square, on a square just outside the Kremlin chanting Russia for Russians, as well as an obscene slur against people from Russia's Caucasus region. They brutally beat some dark-skinned passerbys, and when police moved against the demonstrators, rioting broke out that injured more than 30 people. So next one up, a huge crowd rallies in Rome against uh, Berlusconi. It says tens of thousands of Italians oppose to Premier Silvio uh, Berlusconi marched through Rome on Saturday before a make-or-break vote in Parliament to press their demand that the media mogul or mogul leave power. So it says his government's survival hinges on whether he can muster enough support among lawmakers despite stinging defections by important allies. So I guess he's a bunch of uh, uh, allegations and, and corruption that go on that went on, and that's basically how the whole political system is designed. Uh, basically, it's great. I mean, with uh, with just pure monarchies, uh, you know, basically the people could, you know, actually be a threat because they can sack their king, king or queen because they know who's calling the shots. But in a, quote, democracy or democratic republic or a republic, you don't have that luxury. In fact, you'll go to jail for a long, long time, possibly even get the, the death sentence uh, for doing something like that, right? Because uh, these people aren't accountable in, in Washington, they're not. They just get voted out. And people think that they're free because of that. They think that this is justice because they voted out. They voted for another set of crooks and criminals and voted the last crooks and criminals out. And so somehow that's, you know, democratic and that's, you know, that's going to solve everything. But you keep, you know, like I said, you, you choose the lesser of two evils over and over again, you still, ha you still have evil. So I don't understand how people don't understand that. But uh, they keep voting, and uh, people keep turning out of protests with these elections throughout the world. Uh, scores of Afghans hold anti-U.S. rally. Hundreds of anti, I'm sorry, angry Afghans have taken to the streets of Garda City to protest against the rising number of civilian casualties at the hands of U.S.-led troops. Next one up, Bangladesh wage protests turn violent. It says three people have been killed and scores injured in Bangladesh as tens of thousands of garment workers clash with police and protest rallies over wages. Next one up, hundreds protest Egypt elections result. Hundreds of political activists and opposition leaders in Egypt have protested against the outcome of the parliamentary elections, which has been marred by widespread allegations of fraud. This is the same thing that's going on in Haiti, where, of course, the U.N., uh, in the EU, while telling Ireland, "Oh, you, you can't have elections. You can't have elections until you until you sign on to this this bailout, right?" Uh, the same institutions, the same organizations, turned around and demanded Haiti hold their elections in the amid a humongous cholera outbreak, where at, at least uh, two thousand people have died, and they're blaming it on the UN. And the UN has basically said, uh, "Yes, there's a very good chance that we brought in this cholera." And uh, so they were protesting over elections that they believe were f uh, fraud. And uh, basically the person that won was the person that the majority of the people didn't want. But see, this is democracy, remember? They voted for them. This majority rules. Sarah Palin visits Haiti under tight guard. Haiti, former Alaska Governor Sarah Palin, began a tightly staged managed visit to Haiti on Saturday in which she visited cholera clinics while, voting, while avoiding crowds and the press. Moving on here, Palin still. Uh, Palin, Haiti needs military airlift of supplies. Wow, that's surprising, dude, because, you know, I, I covered this for like a good month of nothing but military ships and helicopters and troops and all kinds of crap just flooding down to Haiti, including telecommunication um, networks and that. Actually, they had them set up the day before, stage, running an exercise the day before the earthquake. Uh, the Air Force did with these telecommunications where they're going to go in and set up in, in, the, in, in case there's a, uh, what did they say, a hurricane in, in Haiti and the next day they got hit by an earthquake and they went in there and set up their telecommunication networks and vaccinated people and threw them bottles of water off a helicopter and that's about the much, as much help as they've gotten since then. So 
So please join me in part two of this War on Terror, Liberty, Sovereignty news segment. This is GGN, and I'm Darko. Thank you.